ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Florian Kretz and I'm happy to present about refractive EDOF and multifocal technologies, blended vision with the MF15, MF30 optical designs and I'm here on the leash for Teleon today. Here are my financial disclosures, I'm also a consultant for Teleon. So if we speak about presbyopia correcting and different optical designs, we should take a close look onto the optical industry because the optical industry actually has covered that for years that there's different lenses available to correct in their spectacles. And if we look at what they do and what we should start to do is we have to look at different type of patients because every patient has a very individual need. We have patients that are very near focused for near tasks. We have patients that want a broad kind of overall vision. But we also have patients that are very much focused on their distance or distant intermediate vision. And with that, we need to like look at certain aspects of their daily life. For example, does desktop work play a role for them? Or are they more the person that works on a notebook or on a tablet that are more mobile? Do dysphotopsia or any visual phenomena play a role for them in their daily activities? And do they maybe already have a micro monovision or had a monovision LASIK before or could adapt to a monovision approach? What always is very important because beside dry eye symptom, that's the main complaint in presbyopia correction is dysphotopsia and the acceptance of dysphotopsia. And many patients are not accepting of dysphotopsia. So if we look a little bit at the rotational asymmetric principle that Tillerion is offering, you can see there's a large part of the optic around 60% that is for the distance focus. And there is the near segment in that sector that has variability in the ad power. The other thing that we know is because it's a refractive principle in this rotational asymmetric lenses is that the absolute loss of light is reduced and is far less than in any diffractive optics. So those patients have effectively more light available for their vision. The other great benefit is because it's a rotational asymmetric design, it doesn't matter where the near segment is placed. So if you realize doing your surgery by just watching the Purkinje images that your near segment is in the optical axis, even if it's a toric model, you just flip the lens 180 degrees and the near segment will not be directly in the optical axis anymore. That is only possible with a rotational asymmetric design. All other symmetric designs don't give you that option. Here you see the general availability. You can see it's a sector shaped with different near powers, the Comfort, the Plus 1.5 model, the uh, Plus 2, the MF20, the Plus 3, the M Plus or the M Plus X with enhanced optics for even more near vision. And um, the intermediate range is more covered with the Plus 1.5 and the Plus 2 range, which are also all available as Toric versions. This Plus 3 is really the one that can be used for true near vision. So if you have all those lens options available on the same platform, you have to look, how can I actually combine it? You can give the patients great intermediate to distance vision with an emetropic target with an MF15 or MF20. But you can also do a monovision press beyond uh, approach with the MF15 as a Düsseldorf scheme or with the MF20 to work with patients that might have had a kind of monovision beforehand as well or are accepting of a monovision approach. But you, so you can also combine different ad powers. For example, you use for the intermediate range on the uh, distance dominant eye an MF15 and MF20. And for the near eye, you use an MF30 or an MF30X to give the patient this true near, while the other eye is covering the range from intermediate to distance. And what you can also do if a patient has one eye with irregularities, you can actually combine it with other optical designs that are based on refractive principles as well. So what I'm going to present to you is a comparison of our data with the MF15 on the emetropic target compared to a mix and match approach having an MF15 in the distance dominant eye and an MF30 in the near dominant eye. And if you look at those two lenses, you can see that basically the shape, the implantation technique, the material is the same. It's just the add power that makes the difference in this hydrophilic lens with hydrophobic surface properties. So you can see our functional results here after three months. Group one with the MF15 emetropic 
you can see distance visual acuity is great. Intermediate visual acuities um, in the 60 and 80 centimeter range are good. Even the 60 is good, but you can see the lack in near. That is where group two comes in, where we have the combination of the MF15 and the MF30 to really equal out that vision. Great distance, great intermediate, in a far intermediate at 80 and in a near intermediate at 60, like newspaper, but also true near vision for near tasks in 40 centimeters. And you can also see that in the defocus curve analyzers, distance is pretty much equal in those groups, but you can see the drop of the MF15 group in the close intermediate to near section. While here in the mix and match approach, you have a slight peak towards near vision for the patients. Still, if those patients compare left to right, different with a monovision approach, they have the same distance functions in both eyes. Very important for me is the rate of dysphotopsia for those patients. And we have published data before with the MF15 showing no disadvantage to a monofocal lens. But you can see here the group one with just the MF15 basically has a performance of any monofocal lens. You can see group two has a slightly higher range of moderate dysphotopsia. But if you compare that to standardized data for cataract patients or standardized data for patients with monofocal lenses, it's still very close in that area with that patients having true near vision without different target refraction. So in conclusion, uh, the MF15 for me has become a standard in my care. I also use it on the hydrophobic platform a lot for my patients and they have a very good outcome, especially for distance vision and for the intermediate. But there is a lack for near. So if patients really want a near vision, I think the mix and match approach to combine the same platform just with different ad powers is really a good way to go, especially in patients where you're afraid that the level of this photopsia could be disturbing. And the possibility for patients that have higher or longer angle alphas to just rotate that lens and flip it 180 degrees is a real benefit compared to all symmetric IOL models. Thank you.